Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at this kit that I got for Christmas. I'm so excited to look at this and and make it. It's a stained glass kit and I haven't done stained glass in a long time. I'm definitely a beginner. Very, I've never had a lesson. Uh, I've just kind of fooled around with, um, with some stained glass supplies in the past. So let's take a look. This was from Michael's. My husband got me this for Christmas because I had uh, I'd asked for it. And um, they have a bunch of different designs. I spotted them at first, oh, it was probably about six months ago. And I thought, what a fun idea to have a kit like this where all the pieces are cut. So somebody that's a beginner like me that doesn't have all the glass grinding and cutting supplies could actually put together a piece of stained glass art. So we're gonna see what it's all about. Okay. Oh, it's very neatly organized. I like that. We've got a um, we've got instructions here. All right, I'll read those later. And what's this? This I think this is just these are just instructions in French. So we've got is it just English and French? And that might be because um, uh, one, two, three, four, five. I believe it's English and French, and that might just be because um, of the part of the world I live in is Maine, and that's close to Canada, so maybe um, these are sold in America and Canada. Uh, and Quebec is French-speaking, so uh, I think when, if things are sold in Quebec, they have to have both English and French, and that would make sense. Maybe if you're buying them closer to, you know, the south or west of the United States, you get a Spanish version. I'm not sure. So let's take a look at what we have. This looks like a template, so I wonder if this is real size. Maybe that's what you set your pieces on. Um, I do have a silicone mat I intend on using. So we've got a brush, and that's probably for flux. And we've got a little bone folder, which is probably for uh, doing the copper tape. We've got copper tape here. This is probably solder, I would imagine. And we've got the hanging chain and jump rings. I'm just going to leave those in their little containers because that's so handy. And let's take a look here. Now I get it. This does not come with a soldering iron. Um, oh my gosh, these are cute. It doesn't come with a soldering iron, but I have a couple. I just need to find them because uh, a few times ago, I don't know, maybe when I con married, at some point when I cleaned up the room of Horde many, many years ago, um, I gave all my soldering supplies to my husband because he had some soldering supplies too, and I just thought it would be, um, oh, these are nice. These look to be cut really accurately. Um, now, of course, I can't speak for some of the other designs. Some of, they have like feathers and birds and um, more elaborate designs, but these all seem to fit the template, which is good. Okay, oh neat. Okay, so the, and they're all wrapped in bubble wrap. Let's see, make sure they're all intact. It would be a bummer to get started and then realize you had some broken pieces. Um, I'm impressed with, uh, with the packaging and how everything's coming. I went to see if I could find these kits um, like on Amazon and I didn't see them. But michaels.com does have them. I don't know if they're in stock, but they do have them uh, listed on their website anyways. The reviews were all over the place. So, because I actually, when I when I saw these, um, I thought, oh, that would be really fun to try. And I looked at them online to see what designs they offered. And the reviews were all over the place, but these haven't been out for very long. So I don't know. They've only been out for about six months. So, I mean, I don't know how many people have tried them. I guess I could have looked for a a review on them but I don't know reviews are all over the place and I, I feel like people that have negative experiences tend to review more than people that have positive experiences these seem to be cut really well all right I think this might be kind of foolproof <laughs> we will see hey there are none of these pieces are broken that's great there does seem to be maybe like a little bit of a chip I don't know if I wouldn't even call that a chip, but it does seem like that end is a little bit blunt. But other than that, I would say these are all 
in good shape. Um, this right here is probably flux, which is the stuff you paint over the copper tape before you put solder on it. It helps it stick. Um, but yeah, everything is sealed up. So I would think even if you had it and it sat on a shelf for a while, you'd be all set. All right, what I'm gonna do now is look at my instructions and then see what I'm supposed to do next. All right, I looked through the instructions. I needed a couple extra things. Um, the soldering iron, which I have not tracked down yet. Uh, push pins, safety glasses. I'm wearing regular glasses. I think that'll be fine. Heat resistant board. I've got, um, actually I've got this piece of foam core that I use for quilling and I'm going to wrap it with, with uh, aluminum foil because it said you can use cardboard and I've already got this so I'm going to use that. Pliers uh, and clamps. I have the clamps uh, handy and my pliers are in the other room but I don't need those quite yet. First thing I'm going to do is wrap foil on my board there. And this uh, will be my working, my working uh, workspace. <laughs> Foil's pretty cool because it just kind of sticks to itself. This is just regular aluminum foil from the kitchen. Alright, and uh, the first thing we need to do is actually clean the pieces. So, and I think I put my template right on here. I'm going to turn it though because I think it's going to fit that way a little bit better. Uh, and I guess I'm just going to pin the template down. I also have some straight pins because I don't have many like just regular thumbtacks so I'm going to use some sewing pins as needed. All right, um, gosh I don't know if that's a great idea because that's got a fold in it. I might need to, oh actually it seems to be pretty flat right now. All right, so yeah let's uh, Let's wash these off, I guess. So um, you could, I, I'm sure, do this in soapy water, but um, basically what you want to do is get the, let's just get the uh, oils off of them. I think. Does that make sense? This one seems to have speckles in it. But I think that's part of the glass. So just be careful not to cut yourself. Because if there's oils and stuff, well, that's got something on it. I think I will need to do this with, uh, with soap and water. Hmm. I don't know, because there's still some crud on there. Is that is it on the glass or is it a defect of the glass? I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna clean all these with alcohol on both sides, and um, then I'm gonna set them back down on the template. All right, all our pieces are clean, and it's time to add the copper tape. So you add the copper tape because if you don't, the the solder can't stick to it. The solder is not gonna stick to glass. It's gotta stick to um, copper or I believe steel. It'll stick to steel. It won't stick to every metal. It won't stick to aluminum. Um, so yeah you've got to have something that the solder will stick to. And uh, I have made a few, like I've made little pendants and I've done sea gloss with um, soldered edges using the top copper tape. So I do have a little bit of experience with it, but it's been a while and I'm sure it's, this is going to be really clumsy. And by the way, I cannot find the nail, but I usually don't polish my nails and I did but I can't find my nail polish remover, so uh, I apologize. You have to look at my goblin nails <laughs> this whole video. <laughs> All right, so I want to center this on here. I'm just kind of, um, I'll get my groove, but for right now, I'm just going to pull the solder kind of flat down like that. Uh, I'm sorry, the tape, and then I'm going to try to center this guy on it. Okay, good. I got this pretty well centered. Yeah. Get maybe like a sixteenth of an inch on each side. Just 
just try to make it fairly even. There are lots of tips. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the uh, the guidebook. Little instructions. Everything is grammatically correct, it seems. I didn't notice any big um, error, which is like, you know, you might think, boy, your standards are pretty low, Lindsay. Honestly, I get a lot of uh, a lot of supplies to review, and oftentimes the the instructions are in very broken English and not edited, and you kind of wonder if some of the stuff may be inaccurate. All right, so I don't know. This doesn't look like a lot of tape to me, so I want to make sure that I don't waste any. So I'm just going to snip this just right where it begins to overlap. Okay. All right, so once you get the copper tape down, it's not too sharp. The copper tape itself could be a little bit sharp on the edges, but uh, what we're going to do is just fold it over with, with your fingers. This is great because you have so much practice on, on foiling the edges by the time you're done this, and everything seems to fit pretty well. There was a little, like, kind of emery board looking thing here if you did need to grind down any of the edges, but everything seemed to be pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed, especially after seeing some of the reviews online. Um, I thought I might be in for a, uh, a bad experience, but, and maybe it's just this design, but there, look how pretty it looks. I love to do little pendants with the uh, copper tape and add this to edges of things. I, so I have some more, if I do run out, it's not a big deal because I have a, I have a couple, I have a couple spools of it somewhere, I just need to find it. So let's zoom in a little bit, I'll show you, uh, this a little bit closer. It's just kind of pretty, isn't it? Um, and now we're going to go over this with the bone folder. Just make sure it's sealed down really well because you don't want flux to get underneath the tape because that will make it come unstuck. So the flux is going to help the solder stick to this. That's what's in this little pot right here. It kind of feels like Vaseline. So if you got it on the glass, the tape wouldn't want to stick to it. So it's really important that you have this sealed down and that you've got flop that the flux doesn't get under the tape. It's so funny, isn't it? It's funny that the solder sticks like that flux helps it stick, but if you you get it on the glass, it will repel the adhesive. It's it's kind of funny. All right, so you're going to repeat this for every piece of glass that you have. Is anybody else doing one of these kits right along with me? Let me know in the comments below. All right, so I'll catch catch you back up when we have all of these all of these uh, wrapped. This is my last piece of glass, and I want to show you what technique has worked work the best for me. And that is just to take the, uh, go on a corner here, just about a quarter of an inch from the edge of a corner, and start the tape, and then uh, peel back the backing, and just kind of like roll the glass down onto the piece of tape, just kind of trying to keep it as centered as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect, just try to be as neat as you can and just kind of work around that way, just trying to keep it centered. And you can peel it back a little bit if you need to. And just try not to crinkle the edges until you've gotten all the way around and then you can fold them over deliberately. And then when I get to the edge, just where it starts to overlap, that's where I want to trim it so I don't get too much bulk but I want to make sure it does get all the way around. So if you can see that, get a little bit of a gap there. Um, but when I push that down, it's going to cover it. It's going to cover it. And then I just want to gently bend over the tape on each edge. I'm not worried about the corners right now. Then I'll take the bone folder, make sure the edges are stuck really well. Press down the corners. The, the foil is very forgiving, it just conforms, so don't have to be too picky. Then I lay that down on the table, and then I'll use the bone folder to really flatten that down and make sure I make a good seal against the glass so that I don't get any of that flux underneath. And it smooths it down, looks really nice. All right, and that is my last piece. I'm gonna zoom out so you can see it. Oh, doesn't it look so pretty already? Okay, so the instructions say that I need to um, use some push pins to kind of pin these down, but I also want them to be, to have like about a, a 16th of an inch gap in between so the solder can fall through. So, um, you know, I'm actually thinking, I think I'll just use sewing pins. I think that will work just as well. And I'm just going to go around and 
uh, put these pins in to hold them in place. That's about a sixteenth of an inch, I think. So I th is that going to push me? Uh, that might push me out of the pattern just a little bit. And it does say to work right on top of the um, right on top of the paper because I was wondering about that. Like, what if solder gets on the paper? Is that going to be all? Is that going to be all weird? But I guess not. I'm kind of wondering if maybe I should put a pin in between just to hold the space. I think I might do that. And that way uh, they'll keep a little gap. You know, if I do that like that. So that's what I'm going to do. And we'll see how that works out. I decided to do something different from the instructions. Um, I was finding the glass to be really slippery on the paper, so I'm actually working directly on the foil and just doing the perimeter because, and they just showed the perimeter in the instructions, um, but I it kept sliding on the paper too much. So I'm actually moving it over onto the foil and doing it this way. So that's working out well for me. I do have a little bit of a buckle on the foil, but I think I can smooth that out a bit. Um, so my advice would be to make sure you get that foil wrapped down around tight on your cardboard and um, it doesn't slip as much on the foil. So I am leaving a little gap as I go and then just pinning around the outside. So there's just a little uh, update of what worked for me. And I'm just trying to keep my lines really straight, like the lines, the diagonal and, par and uh, parallel lines. So yeah, that's, that's, where, I'm, that's where I'm at. I will uh, show, share this again when I have it all pinned. All right, this is a little precarious. We got my soldering iron heating up here. Got a wet sponge there. Here is my flux. I'm just gonna cut open the bag. So I'm gonna brush on the flux. I may have to readjust my little glass pieces because they can shift a little bit, but um, the instructions say to brush this all over the copper tape and then, um, and then we'll be able to add the solder. So you can see it's kind of like a, it kind of just looks kind of like wax. And I have a feeling it's better to have a little too much than not enough. Um, so I'm going to be generous. And, you know, we can wash it off the glass afterwards. We just don't want it to get... Um, I see it wants to move them around a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and, and coat it on there and then adjust everything afterwards. All right, I think I've got it situated. Now we're going to get into the solder. And hopefully I remember how to solder. Um, I should open this bag beforehand. I like how everything is, is organized in the kit. And I'm glad I went with a simple, or I'm glad Jason got me a simple kit to begin with because... Um, yeah, I think this could be, it could be really difficult if there, if there was a lot of curves and angles and, you know, things like that. I think straight lines is, is a good way to go. All right, so I'm going to hold the solder and the, um, and the gun and let's see, is that hot enough? Oh, there we go. And I'm going to go for the, um... I'm going to go for the joints first. Ah! Oh no. I've soldered my solder. I probably should have practiced a little bit first. I haven't used solder in so long. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on, let me tin the tip. I recall having to do that. I think I might need a new tip. This does seem like really repellent. I'm making a mess, but all right, let's try this again. Did I move that one too much? All right, I'm going to go for, oh, I hope my head doesn't get in the way, but my gosh, let's try to get a bunch of it to drop. I don't know what I'm doing. Ah. Hmm. I try heating up a joint first. 
seem to recall that being a technique. Oh man. Maybe I should refer back to my soldering for crafters video that I did like a decade ago to refresh my memory. Oh my gosh, I'm just making a mess. I'm gonna burn myself too, probably. I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm making a mess. Oh, and they're pushing apart. All right, guys, I need to uh, I need to practice. I'll be back. It's not going well, friends. Um, I'm trying to do the joints like the directions say, and um, it's just such a mess. Uh, I have a feeling that I should have just got a new soldering iron or soldering tips or something because I feel like it's not melting the solder very well. And as I recall, uh, like you can have oxidation on the tips and then and then that keeps it from melting properly, which that seems to be what happens. It will like melt further up here, but not on the tip. So I think I have some oxidation problems and I keep moving these little pieces. Maybe I shouldn't have bothered to try to keep the gaps in between them, but that's what the thing said, so uh, I don't know. But I'm getting very frustrated. Um, and I don't know if it's my lack of experience or if it's the soldering iron or what, but uh, it was all going so well. I'm about two and a half hours in on this project. Um, and it's all going to pot right now. I actually did have some uh, soldering tips, but they don't fit any of the guns that I have. So I must have bought them thinking that they would fit, but they don't. So I don't know. I don't know about this flux either. I don't know about any of it. I'm questioning everything. <laughs> But uh, I'm going to keep trying and I'll let you know how it goes. Oh, and I had to open the door for ventilation because it was, you know, and uh, now it's cold in my office because I run a space heater in here in the winter because it's a wasteland this time of year in Maine. And I work in the basement and it's cold. Uh, so now I'm co getting cold and I'm doing this irritating step of this project and uh, I'm annoyed. Okay, so uh, I think I've got this together somewhat at the joints. I'm gonna take the pins out. This is a mess, but I did, I, I think it's a soldering iron because I switched to a different one, which was also looking in a state of poor repair, but it was able to melt the solder better. So I think um, if you had a brand new soldering iron, like you bought this kit and you bought an iron all together, you'd probably be fine. Um, I did not take care of my soldering iron. And um, I think the tips all oxidized and so it wasn't melting things very well. So I'm gonna try to just kind of spread this out a little bit. And then, um, because like the tip of this soldering iron is not heating up very well, I've gotta like use like the, uh, the edge of it. This is not ideal. I should just stop the video now. But maybe you've got a soldering iron. You're like, I just got this one at home. I'm gonna use that rather than go out and buy a new one. Um, and you're running into this issue, and then you'll know why. Uh, so I don't know. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep trying. I'm gonna keep trying and keep trying to neaten this up and um, get some more solder down and smooth those big bumps of solder down. You can see how I don't know if you can see or not, but. It's like the top of the tip of the of the iron is not is not working. It's not working for me. I've never been a really elegant solderer anyway. So, so there's that. And I'm definitely out of practice. I'm hoping I can just kind of like melt an area. I never I never get the results. Like you see somebody they just like like the plumbers and they um, they just like put the solder down and it just like falls along a pipe. So this will be painful to watch. Okay, so I'm just gonna gonna continue. I'm gonna try to cover 
all of this copper and then flip it over and do it on the other side. But once I get the side done, I'll show you. All right, guys, it ain't pretty, but it's done on one side. So now I got to do the same to the other side. But this looks prettier just to have it gold. But uh, yeah, I'm going to do what it says. Do it on both sides, right? You see to do it on both sides. Yep. Turn over and repeat the process on the back side. This has taken forever. Oh my word, it's taken so long. I blame the soldering iron though. I don't think it's anything to do with the Michaels kit. I think it's this uh, this soldering iron. I will tell you though, I found this thinner solder in my uh, toolbox and that works so much better because it melts so much quicker. Um, so, for what it's worth, I think this is electrical solder instead of uh, instead of plumbing solder or stained glass solder. Doesn't seem to be that different other than the fact that it's thinner. So oh, I'm going to keep on doing this. Um, it's lead free. I have a bunch of lead free solder too I can use. So I mean, I'll get through it, but oh, it's getting, it's actually, this side's a little easier. I will tell you. I know my technique is bad. This isn't a tutorial. You know what guys, don't, you know, you're fine to follow me up until the part we get the soldering gun out, I think. After that, you need to go find someone better. This tip is in really bad shape, and I and I think that's what's giving me all the grief and why it's taking so long. So if you've done this kit, tell me how long it took you to do the soldering, because uh, I'd be really interested to know. I think if I buy another soldering iron, I'm going to buy extra tips to go with it, because I think it's like... Um, I think it's the tips oxidized and then, you know, it doesn't melt the solder properly because I have to use, like, I have to have this way down at an angle to get, like, a hot spot on the iron. But anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to finish it up. I'm going to do what the instructions say and, uh, I'll check back on you when I'm ready to add the little loops to hang it. Okay, I had to come back because I just used my own flux, my soldering paste there that I had from before. And I just did that line of solder, which is so much nicer looking than this other stuff. So I'm thinking the soldering paste is not the best. And this was cheap. This was like $1.39 Oatly lead free soldering paste. Um, I just tested it to see if it would work. This is so much better. I'm just going to use this. Maybe the side will come out a lot nicer. Okay, Michaels, you get up your game with the soldering paste. All right, that's all. All right, guys, we're in rough shape here, but we got this together. Soldered on both sides and I spread the solder around the edges. Whew. Man, this has been quite a, quite a project. Uh, I guess I would, I would say this is probably not a beginner craft. Oh, I lost a jump ring. I would say this is not a beginner crafter project just because, um, it's kind of, it's kind of tough. Uh, and I don't know. I think, well, I think part of it is, um, my soldering iron was not in great shape. It was neglected and so what I'm doing here is I'm putting the big jump ring on the end of the chain here. This was included in the kit. I think though, I don't think the kits are that bad. Ugh, let's close that up. Come on you. This is some tough... That's, you know the good thing about that's actually a really strong steel jump ring. So when I solder this down, I'm going to solder it so that the split in the jump ring is what I attach so that we'll solder it shut. So that, uh, so what I have here, I just put the ends on like that. I'm going to attach them there. I've got them on my aluminum foil. I'm going to put them kind of like that, I think. They showed on this, uh, well, on the photograph here, and probably on the box too. No, on the box they show one loop in the center. Um, here they show two loops here on the edge. That's what I'm going to do, but I'll show you the one from the box so just so you can see. That's really pretty, uh, but I think it's going to look, it's going to be nicer if I have the two ends there plus, you know, gives me two points of contact. I'm going to use my flux because my flux was just working better and I'm going to add the flux there and there. I'm going to need to really clean this up because it is so greasy right now. I'm going to add the flux on the, uh, on the ring as well. It just helps, uh, it helps the solder melt for some reason. I don't really, as you can tell, I mean, I haven't soldered in ages. I should have watched my soldering video that I did many years ago before I attempted this. I've got like fluff everywhere too, because I was, 
um, I was trying to clean up the uh, grease and stuff off this. I feel like this is just such a crazy project and I know it's hard to see because I've got this silver things on aluminum foil, but I'll try to clean this off a little bit. I think if I replace the tip on this, it would be uh, it would be much better. I've got some steel wool here. I'm also trying to clean it Ugh, unsuccessfully. Um, so, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm actually going to take one of my clamps, which I keep, actually keep them here. I'm thinking that it might be good to put a paper towel on it so I don't break my glass here. I think, I think I'll try to, uh, where was I putting that? Was I putting it there? I think so. In this episode of How Not to Solder, let's see. You know what? I'm take that right off the edge there. Can you see that? Um, so the key will be soldering this on without burning myself. Don't burn your hands off, friends. Boy. This seems like such a bad idea. Okay, so I'm going to hold this. Oh, this seems familiar. I think I've done this before and I don't recommend. All right, maybe I'll try to get some, get like a bead of solder there on top of the flux. Come on, you. There we go. Then I'll bring over my jump ring and... There we go. I've soldered one on. I realize you probably can't see what the heck I'm doing, but you're there with me in spirit and I appreciate it. Do I have enough? Ah, that's hot. Okay. <laughs> All right. You know what? I think we got it. I think by George, I think we've got it. There is our lovely our lovely little uh, stained glass sun catcher. I'm going to clean it up. I'll get photos of it uh, hanging up in the sun. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess it's all right. I, it's, it's not gorgeous. I've got so many blobs. I think that if I had a better solder, if I had a fresh tip, then I could go and I could melt some of those blobs down. You know, smooth them out a little bit. I say as a non... Uh, experienced stained glass novice but it just seems like I should be able to go in there and smooth down some of that uh, that yuck but I think hopefully these are universal tips and I can get another tip for this but again this is not the Michaels soldering iron. This is just one that I had. And I don't think they're, I think they're about $20 at Michael's, don't quote me, but uh, they're all together in a, uh, on a kiosk there. I could see how these would have got bad reviews online, um, just because it is, it is a more complex project. And to not have a teacher helping you do something like a stained glass project, your first stained glass project, um, yeah, I could see that would be very, that would be very difficult and confusing, but I think if you've done stained glass before, you probably, this would probably be a lot of fun. Oh crap, what did they do? That's not even my problem. That was the chain. The chain came undone. Are you kidding me? The chain broke. The chain broke. My soldering stays sound, but the chain broke. Um, hmm. All right, well, I'm going to repair that and clean this up. I'll share some photos of this hanging so you can see how it all turned out, but you know what? That's not too bad. I think, you know, nobody's going to be looking at it this close. It's going to be hung in a window. You'll be seeing it from like a 10 foot distance. It'll be fine. Uh, it was fun. It was challenging. And um, I don't know if I'd do another one. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe if I had a better soldering gun. Uh, newer, uh, new. I don't need a better soldering iron. I need a new, new tip. Maybe if I had a new tip on my soldering iron. And these were on sale again for 15 bucks. I might pick up another one. Because, you know, I like a challenge. It's always harder the first time that you make something. Uh, I find the second time you're like, you know all the mistakes to avoid, right? 
yeah, so sloppy. So sloppy, but, you know, it's fine. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this non-tutorial. And uh, if you tried these kits out and you have feedback, uh, let me know in the comments below. Or if you're a professional stained glass artist and you want to tell me everything I did wrong, sure, why not? Uh, people do that anyway, so <laughs> you can add to the you can add to the chorus. Uh, that is all for me today. Thank you for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.